Well, that's just great, Peg, but I'm not in LA. East Egypt, for all I know. No, 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 listen to me. You get standing on the line. Yeah, I'll hold. They screwed up the Porter plastic shipment. I'm gone for one day, and they screw up a quarter of a million dollars? Oh, Stanton. That's where Doc Milikoff lived. What? Doc Milikoff. He'd come over at four in the morning if we needed him. He wasn't just a vet. He was a neighbor. Closer than a relative. I wonder if he's still alive. Hey, Andrew, look over there. Look at the big barn. Do you see them? Yeah. Do you see the cows? What noise does a cow make? Boo! Yeah. What noise does a lion make? Boo! Do you see the pigs over there? Okay. Yeah. The pigs. <laughs> what am I, an idiot? Yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah, of course I brought my fax machine. As soon as we get there, I'll let you know what the number is. Yeah, okay, goodbye. What? You brought a fax machine on our family trip? We get away from LA for four days and you bring the fax machine. Well, honey, when Mama was a little girl, a very sad thing happened to me. My mommy became very sick. Red Rock Ranch was my mama's home. After she got sick, all she wanted was to come home to Red Rock Ranch. Just one more time. What is it? You'll hear it. You'll hear it. And when the breeze sweeps across your face, I won't be far away. Mm. Happy Valentine's Day, baby.
I need some answers. I'm losing hope. If you lose hope, you lose purpose. Natalie, listen to me. If you can't find hope, go to Red Rock. And when you go, ride. And when you ride, listen. I'll forever be whispering to you in the wind. And listen for God. Look for Him. How about driving into town tonight, going to the mall? Some great Christmas sales going on now. How do you spell prerogative? Look it up. Dad, I'm late. Can't you just tell me how to spell it? Matt, look it up and you'll know it for life. Thanks for the help. Where's the dictionary? Last time I saw it, it was by the window. It starts with a P, doesn't it? The last time I checked, it did. Daddy. What is it? It's Mama's. Mama's white rose. Mm. Almost a year now. This doesn't seem possible. <laughs> I'm a horrible person, Daddy. Natalie. No, seriously, I am. Sometimes it's like I forget. Some nights, as I'm starting to fall asleep, I wonder if I even remember to remember her today. Her voice, her smile, her walk, it was all so familiar. Now it's all so strange. Daddy, I'm starting to forget things about her. Sometimes I want to just die. Natalie, You'll never forget your mama. It's just that time has a way of dulling the pain, that's all. I know we haven't talked about it, but could we go to Nevada for Christmas? Red Rock Ranch? This Christmas? Ever since you were six years old, you moaned and groaned every time we went to Red Rock Ranch for summer vacation. Now you want to go. It's different now. I know it is. It's just that I owe you paybacks for all that incessant backseat whining from Seattle to Las Vegas. Do we have to go? Are we there yet? Can we go now? <laughs> Dad, please. I have my license now. I can help you drive. Natalie. Dad, please. Not now. I don't have any vacation built up yet. 
when your mom got sick, I stayed home with her almost eight weeks. I know, but isn't there any way? I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe next summer, maybe next Christmas, but not now. Now I better go off to work. My boss informs me that being late is not my P R E R O G A T I D E. Boss? Who? Me. Oh, it's my turn for dinner tonight, right? So what do you think? How about the usual? Gee, I wonder if that would be Canadian bacon, pineapple, and thin crust pizza. Uh, uh, uh. You mustn't forget the extra cheese. <laughs> A tragedy, to be sure. You'll pick it up? <laughs> sure. Honey, we'll go to Red Rock next summer. I promise, okay? I love you. I love you too, Daddy. I clearly understand that, and I assure you that the environmental impact study will be completed before Christmas. You have my word on it. I appreciate that, Mayor. And a happy holiday to you, too. Goodbye. You're not going to work through the holidays, are you, John? Well, geez, Margaret, if I don't, who will? I'm trying to run a business here. Is that worth giving up everything else? I think I'd rather be poor. Well, keep it up, and you just may get the chance. Promises, promises. Yes, I need scheduling information and round-trip airfare from Seattle to Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, I will. Yes. Really? Matt? Huh. Would you do me a favor? What? I left an important business card in my suit coat pocket. Where is it? It's on the chair in the kitchen. Do you mind? Mm -mm. Uh, need anything else on that? Nope. Mm. Tickets? Are you serious? We're going to Nevada for Christmas? Hold on, we're not going, you're going. I just can't get away right now. You certainly don't think I'm gonna leave you on Christmas, do you? Uh, if I don't get this report done, you're the one who's gonna be alone. No, I want you to go. Besides, I think it'll be good for you. Uh, does Aunt Sheridan know anything about this? I called her this afternoon. She was thrilled, I mean ecstatic. Aunt Sheridan? Well, you know, in her own sort of way. <laughs> I don't believe this. But you'll only be gone for 10 days. You'll come back Christmas night. What am I going to pack? You're excited, aren't you? I guess I am, Dad.
So, does it look the same? Uh, kind of. Well, all that you remember, right? Okay. Who's that? Oh, it's Morgan. Your granddaddy hired him the day he graduated from high school. It's 25 years and he hasn't missed a day since. Back last month, I promoted him to ranch manager. Folks used to have a farm about five miles that way. And I suppose you could say that we grew up together. I don't remember ever seeing him before. I'm not surprised. He's kind of a private sort of guy. Yeah, likes to keep to himself. Uh, seems to me my ears are burning. I don't suppose either of you are talking about me, are you? Morgan, I'd like you to meet my niece, Natalie. Natalie, this is Morgan. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Jenna's girl. Is something wrong? Morgan. Hmm? Oh, apologize. Just, uh, going through some old memories. Good ones or bad? A little bit of both, I suppose. Come on, I'll show you where we're gonna be staying. Yeah, I suppose I better be turning in, too. What are you talking about? It's not even seven o'clock. You haven't had supper yet. Oh, it's gonna be another beautiful night. Queen Cassiopeia sitting stately on her throne. Ryan. Wind kicks up this time of year, gets a little bit chilly. Reckon you'd be needing this. Does it ever snow here? <laughs> Only on Christmas. Listen, I'll get your bags. Oh, uh, remember Doc said you're not supposed to be lifting. We'll doc, get those bags. Doc, Doc, Doc. Well, night, Natalie. Night, Miss Sherry. Night. Did he hurt his back or something? Well, last night he said he heard some strange sound in the middle of the night. Kind of woke him up. Like an animal? No, like wind. Wind like a freight train running through the ranch. <sighs> I'll get the big one. Okay. You can go ahead and set your bag down right there. You know, Morgan, being the uh, great protector that he is, was out of bed and out the door before he even woke up. He said that he threw his back out in all the commotion. Do you want some water? Oh, no, thanks. <clears throat> what, was it a storm or something? Shoot, there's about a billion stars up in the sky. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Morgan was pretty upset about it, though. He says he doesn't want to talk about it, and he's been acting strange all day. That's weird. It's not even the weirdest part. What? Morgan told Dr. Milikhev that he heard a voice coming from the wind. Whose voice? You better ask Morgan. Why don't we get you unpacked and settled in? Okay. Take it easy, girl. It's just me. Me and the demons. Ten and thirteen. <laughs> you were quite the holy terrors back then. She's so young. You know, she looks a lot like you. You think so? Hmm? Most people say I take out from my dad. Oh, really? 
Do you have hair on your back? <laughs> Thanks for a wonderful dinner, Aunt Sheridan. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a home-cooked meal like that in a long time. Why don't we get rid of this formal stuff? You just call me Sherry. Everyone else does. So what are you looking for, Natalie? Oh, nothing really. I was just snooping around, admiring your photos. No. I mean, here at Red Rock Ranch. This has never exactly been your favorite place on Earth, you know. I don't know how to explain it. I guess I just needed to be here for a while. Are you doing okay? You mean like in school? Fine. No. I mean like in your head. <sighs> I don't know, Aunt. Sorry, Sherry. Some days when I wake up, I have to tell myself Mama's dead. I don't feel anything anymore. I'm sort of numb. Each day I remember less and less. She's slowly slipping away from me. I'm starting to feel all alone. So, are you looking for your mother out here? Sort of. Maybe I'm looking for the woman who became my mother. Or maybe I'm looking for the little girl that became that woman. I don't know. Well, if it's the little girl you're after, I probably have about 70 scrapbooks full of photographs. Your grandpa, Shutterbug, had us constantly posing. How old were you when Grandma and Grandpa died? No. Oh. My father died when I was a senior in college. And my mom died when I was about your age. Had this ranch ever since. Then you know what it's like? No. It's your mother that's died. It's your pain. It's your feelings. No one else knows what that's like. You really love horses, don't you? <laughs> yeah, more than just about anything. <laughs> well, you must be tired after that long flight. We also start days pretty early around here. What do you say we call it a night, huh? Sherry? Yeah? This is probably stupid. But did you like my mother? Natalie, she was my sister. I loved her. Did you like her? Get you an extra blanket. Good morning, Morgan. 
Good grief, girl. You scared the chitlins out of me. <laughs> Guess you couldn't hear me over all that grease there. That sure is a ton of grease, Morgan. Well, of course it is. How else? Dad gummit. How else are you gonna make gravy? <laughs> gravy? <laughs> Biscuits and gravy. Oh, it doesn't get any better than that, girl. Nothing better than some white gravy on them hot biscuits and bacon fried up with eggs in the middle of a sunshine morning out in the rain. Aren't you going to eat? Nope. Not this morning. Where's Aunt Sheridan? Yeah, she and Doc Millicoff are out in the barn examining that horse. What horse? Wait a minute. That was real. I thought I was dreaming. Well, maybe you were. Maybe you weren't. But it's real this morning. Go on, eat up. <laughs> I plan to. Well, she's in perfect shape. Healthy as any horse I've ever seen. So? So what she's doing and running around out in the middle of the country is beyond me. No tag, no saddle. If I had a horse like that, I certainly wouldn't let her run around in the country, that's for sure. Hi, hey, Morgan, Doc. Crystal clear last night, eh, Morgan? <laughs> Don't suppose you uh, heard any wind out there, did you? Well, I guess I am best be going. Good morning. Doc, this is my niece, Natalie. She's visiting us from Seattle. Oh, she's beautiful. She's a stray. Well, don't you be sticking your fingers in there. She's as edgy as a two-headed rattler. What's her name? We don't know. Well, I've been taking care of horses around here for 30 years. She's definitely not one of mine. Come here, girl. No one's gonna hey, hurt hey. you. You're beautiful. White. Just like... A... <laughs> yeah, that's what we'll call you, Rose. Rose? What was the name of your sister's horse? Rose? Well, I best be going. And thanks for coming by, Doc. Thanks for coming on, Doc. Say I had a Ruth course. Well, none of this sitting around. I got work to do. Well, did you finish unpacking? Are you serious? I was asleep before I even hit the pillow. Next thing I know, bacon, sausage, biscuits, and gravy. We're hovering in the cloud above my bed. <laughs> Didn't happen to hear a voice coming from him, did you? Yeah. Eat me, eat me. <laughs> I'll clean up the kitchen and get unpacked. Forget the kitchen. Also, forget those old suitcases of yours. Get into the truck. We are heading to Vegas. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, the girls are going shopping. Should I ask Morgan if he wants to come? You've gone mad, girl. I would rather have my fingernails pulled out with a pair of pliers than go shopping with a man. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Yeah, the fingernail part, too, huh? <laughs> What, no sleigh, no elves, no old Saint Nick? You know, a little Christmas cheer never hurts anybody. Yeah. Can you get this to the barn? Don't take it back. Uh, we'll have supper in 45 minutes. There it is. More it's like something's eating him. He doesn't like me very much, does he? Oh. Don't take it personally, Natalie. He's got some old demons he's fighting. We all do.
play? No. Hot chocolate? It gets mighty cold around here at night. Today the 15th. 16th. Eight days until the party. Party? Yeah. Christmas Eve? God, I forgot to tell you. Every year, the ranchers in this county, we have a barn dance and we have a potluck, and this year it's going to be at my place. We'll have carols and good food, and we'll dance to the North Pole two step. <laughs> what? You heard me. Maybe we could find you a young gentleman caller. You do like boys, don't you? I used to. And now? If you don't have one, you can't lose one. One less broken heart for me. So you're going to blast through life all alone? Never be lonely again? Well? It's easier that way. We didn't deserve that. I didn't deserve that. My mother, she was the greatest, the most loving, caring person in the whole wide world. She's fallen away from me, like an autumn leaf. I can't let go. I don't know how to let go. Not until I know why. Why did she have to die? Why did she suffer? Please, can you tell me? I wish I could. Tenderly. My baby to sleep. Softly, my baby.
cheeks and, and the, the sunlight shines, shines through. Take, take my kiss to your pillow and may all your dreams come true. Tenderly, softly, my baby to sleep. Close in my arms through the night I will keep Till morning time breaks and the sunlight shines through Take my kiss to your pillow and your dreams will come true Tenderly, softly, my baby to sleep Close in my arms through the night I will keep Till morning time breaks and the sunlight shines through Take my kiss to your pillow and your dreams will come true Yeah, she's just, just a minute, hang on. Natalie! Natalie! What? Get down here, your daddy's on the phone. I'm coming. What? <laughs> now, are you serious? Now, crack of dawn and Natalie cannot be used in the same sentence. <laughs> so how's work? Reports, studies, documentation. It's a never ending cycle of bureaucratic red tape. I was thinking, Sherry, why don't you fly home with Natalie after Christmas? I mean, if you have the time and everything. Oh, I can't, John. I got four new horses. I have to start training in January. Oh, and here is Miss Nevada now. Yeah. Uh, take care, John. Daddy! Princess, Sheridan tells me that you're ready for the National Finals Rodeo. Well, I can definitely dress the part, that's for sure. So what do you think? Oh. She's magnificent. I mean, she's really a champion. Hey, Michelle, why don't you speed her up, see if she'll run for you. Oh, Sherry, that's not a good idea, not yet. Not... Well? So look at that. Huh. Well, look at that, that's unbelievable. I haven't seen a horse do that since my sisters. Michelle? Yeah? Go ahead and rub her down. Check her hooves if she'll let you. Okay. Oh, and Michelle. Why don't we get that old equipment out of the back of the barn? I think it's about time we set up the jumping arena again. That's good. Maybe in a few days she'll let you ride her. She really gets to you, doesn't she? The horse? <laughs> Natalie. No. Natalie? Don't be ridiculous. You still love her, don't you? Oh, just stop it, oh. stop it. Answer me. She's been dead pretty near a year. Yeah, and she was married 20 years before that, but that never changed your feelings for her, did it? Such a fool. In love with another man's wife. Another man's dead wife. No, Morgan, you're not a fool. You just, you never figured out how to stop loving your first love. I've been trying to bury her memory. Morgan, it's been 25 years. We were just kids, teenagers. Shannon, I thought I was over. I thought I was all gone. Then Natalie shows up. Natalie. Her face. Her smile. The way she talks, the way she walks. Rushing through my soul like a mountain stream. Morgan, she's gone. She left a long time ago. It's time to let go. 
I can't cheer. She promised me the last dance. She promised me. Waiting for Cowboy Morgan, the best cook in Nevada, to fix me breakfast. No matter, can't you do anything for yourself? Morgan, I was just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. So, how's Rose doing this morning? Well, Michelle's on the back setting up equipment. Your aunt seems to think Rose can jump. English? Hmm. My mother wrote English. I know. And Sharon said you knew my mother. Town? About an hour ago. You were sleeping so nicely on that couch, I didn't want to wake you. So it looks like you were exploring some family history in those photo albums? Yeah, I hope you didn't mind. Your family, too. How was your day with Rose? 
Oh, it was great. It was the way we were riding in stride. As one. This sounds silly. It was almost as though she was teaching me how to ride. Well, good horse will do that. Either that or kick you off, one or the other. So any news from Doc? Actually, apparently there was a horse show last weekend at Logandale, and some of the horses did get loose in the storm. Logandale? Morgan said that's nearly 40 miles from here. Well, a frightened horse can run a long way. <laughs> Look how far a frightened girl can run. I can't keep her, can I? No, but I suppose until we find the owner, it'll be okay for you to write her. Morgan seems to think that she's taken a fancy to you. <laughs> Morgan, what does he know? He knows a lot. Morgan has been around horses and ranches all of his life. In fact, he and his father used to train the horses that uh, we used to ride on. My mother and you? Yeah. Jenna and I used to ride all summer long. <laughs> After we finished our chores, that is. I guess I'm not like my mother, am I? Sure you are. You just don't know it yet. Are you heading out? Yeah, just for a little walk. Don't be gone long. I'm going to have dinner on the table in 30 minutes. So how's that little city girl of ours doing? Okay, I guess. <laughs> Could you hand me those carrots? Yeah. You know, I am surprised, Morgan. About what? Well, last night, Natalie was saying that she was never going to leave this ranch unless she understood why her mother died. And? Now she's acting like just everything's fine. Well, maybe she got her answer. Now nah, she's just distracted by that horse. Oh, that horse, that horse, listen to you. Jealous. <laughs> that ain't no ordinary horse. No, ma'am. Hey, Sherry, have you seen my billfold? Well, I'm certainly not going to spend any more time on it. My training schedule is screwed up enough. Sherry, sure, then. Sheridan! What? What is the matter with you? Where did you get this? Get what? This! I don't know. Uh, I guess... There's some boxes up in the attic. Uh, they must have come from Jenna's box. This is mine. It belongs to me. It's mine. Don't touch it. Don't handle it. Don't do anything with it. Morgan! Hungry, aren't you, girl? Pretty good fixings, I bet. like you and me <laughs> we are when I was little I needed a mama someone to kiss me when I scraped up my knee someone to make everything feel all right someone to play house with <laughs> someone to have make-believe tea parties with but I'm not a little girl anymore I'm becoming a woman. And now I need a mama. It's strange though. I haven't been a woman long enough to know what I need from a mother. <sighs> Let alone everything I'll miss. What am I gonna do, Rose? What am I gonna do? Rose, 
Kind of simple, isn't it? It stands for hope and love. I'll give you all the love you need for now. But you're going to have to find the hope on your own. Well, I guess I will too. Yes, operator. Information Seattle, please. Good morning, Natalie. What's going on? Oh, well, you are watching a 42-year-old woman work herself towards a nervous breakdown. <laughs> I'm panicking. That's what's happening. Well, can I help with something? Yes, as a matter of fact, you can. I want you to go upstairs into the attic. You'll find several boxes of Christmas lights. You'd get those down and decorate the barn. What? Tomorrow night's Christmas Eve. OK. Hey, the hoedown and potluck is out tomorrow night in that barn, right there. Oh, geez, Sherry, I forgot all about that. So did I. That's the problem. Well, don't worry about a thing. I'll get it looking real festive. Uh, drinks, plates, napkins, gifts. Oh, god. What? A band. I have got to find a band. No, Doc, I understand that. I know, but I gotta get the vaccinations. Tomorrow at the very latest. Great. I knew I could count on you. No, that's perfect. In fact, the owner's supposed to be here tomorrow night for the hoedown. Right. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Did you say owner? Did you find Rose's owner? Well, we think so. This guy's lost a horse, and he's coming tomorrow night to see if Rose is his. Then we'll know for sure. Well, I got work to do. You got a barn to decorate. Let's get it going. What about your back? What about it? Nineteen fifty-six. Sheridan, Jenna, Morgan. Hey, and... have you no respect for other people's property? I, I was just. You were just sticking your snotty little nose in my business. Who's that other girl, Morgan? It's none of your business. No, it is my business. You were in the picture. So is Sheridan, and so is my mother. Someone wrote it in the picture, Morgan. It said Natalie. Just hush up. Hush up. Talk to me, Morgan. <sighs> Natalie, we were kids. Sheridan and I were five years older than Jenna. My little sister, Natalie. We grew up here on the ranch together. We lived up the road just a spell. It was horses. Horses was our whole life. The competition was fierce. Who could ra race the fastest? Who was the better barrel racer? Everybody was competing, except Jenna. Jenna's daddy wanted her to ride English. You see, Jenna was my girl. She was my first love. Every night at sunset, we'd ride our horses up to Red Rock Canyon. The reds, the yellows, the oranges. It was like God was painting on his canvas just for us. I loved her. She promised me the last dance, no matter what happened. What did happen? June 16th, 1957. I'll never forget that day. We were coming home from a church social Sunday night. Pickup truck crossed over the center divider and hit his head on. Mom and Daddy were killed instantly. Next thing I know, I woke up in a cornfield dazed. Couldn't find my baby sister Natalie. They 
found her in the road dead. Jenna was devastated. She'd lost her best friend. She withdrew, wouldn't talk to anybody, wouldn't do anything. She and Sheridan grew far apart. She and I grew far apart. I never heard from Jen again until you. Me? Got this card announcing a baby girl. Natalie Rose, after my baby sister. I don't know how to let go. I hope you understand. I understand. For about a year, I kept asking myself, why? Why did she die? Yeah, Natalie. For 25 years, I've been trying to figure out why I lived. Why did I live? Well, I got work to do. Go decorate that barn. Thunder. Is he yours? No, Sheridan's. I've never seen you ride before. Well, that doesn't mean I don't ride. One o'clock. I'll be back by three.
Morgan? Thunder, where's Morgan? Morgan! Help! Help! Don't worry, I'll find you some help, I promise. Milka, please. This is an emergency. Oh, you crazy fool. Oh, just finish stitching me up and save the lectures, will you? Uh, you've already got a bulging disc in your back. You know what that means, don't you? Means I could still whip you in a fist fight if I had to, so don't get me all riled up. Well, I guess that'll do it. Jeez, Doc, it feels like you sewed my head to my chest. Why'd you use leather? Whoops. Five days of bed rest. Five days, you hear me? Only time you get up is to go to the bathroom. Doc, there's no way I'm going to no, stay in the no, bed for... No, no, no. Five days. Oh. Now, if I hear you get up, I'll get that ambulance to shackle you and take you to the hospital. Now, Sheridan? Uh, I'll watch him, Doc. Oh. Well, good night, Morgan. Five days. I'll walk you out, Doc. Oh, thanks, Doc. Are we going to see you tomorrow night? Oh, we wouldn't miss a potluck and barn dance for anything. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to be giving that white horse of yours some vaccinations for the new owner. Owner? Did you find its owner? Well, not me. Morgan did. In fact, he's going to be at the dance tomorrow night. See if that's his horse. <laughs> well, good night. Oh, good night. Thanks, Doc. Morgan? Doc said you found <laughs> Rosa's owner? I'm gonna lose Rose, aren't I? I told you, Sheridan. I lose everything I love.
attention, please. Can I have your attention, please? Thank you. Oh, now hush up, Doc. I know what you're thinking. I'll be back to bed soon enough. Now hush up and enjoy the party. Folks, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, a very special horse strayed onto our property. Now this wasn't a wasn't a normal horse. This was a very special horse. Now, for several days, I've been making phone calls trying to find the owner of that horse. Well, I'm pleased to announce the night before Christmas, he's here. So please. Give him a fine Nevada welcome. Daddy. Hey, Morgan. Great party. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Man, that is some nasty fall you took off that horse yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. You know what? I just wrote a brand new song. I'm going to sing it for you to cheer you up. We're going to call it the, uh, the last dance of the night. <laughs> hey, guys, hold on. One more song. Help, I'm falling for you and I can't get up. My feeble knees don't work the way they did no more. Help, I'm falling for you and I can't get up. You filled my empty loving cup before I hit the floor. When you walked into the room, I couldn't stand the sight. Your skin's so soft, your sweet perfume You look to be so right I stumbled up as I had planned To ask you for a dance Oh yes, you said and took my hand And led me to romance Help, I've fallen for you And I can't get up My feeble knees don't work the way they did no more Oh help, I've fallen for you and I can't get up You filled my empty loving cup before I hit the floor You filled my empty loving cup before I hit the Of course, I don't have any records on her, John, but she's healthy. Dad, you're gonna love her. She's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Rose. Rose. Sherry, where's Rose? Maybe Morgan put her in a different spot. Ah, my ears are burning. What's up? What did you do with Rose? Rose? Where is she? Damn, damn it! What, what's that?
Well, that's a miracle. Somebody's trying to tell you something. I hope you're gonna listen. So you sure you got everything? Didn't forget anything? Yeah. Okay. You had a good time? I did. Dad, thanks for coming. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Natalie. Oh, wait, I forgot something. You can go ahead and get on in. I'm starting to wonder if you were even going to come and say goodbye to me. Morgan, I'll never forget you. So tell me, did you get your answers? I was trying to find ways to get over my mother's death. Rose showed me that all I really needed to do was get through it. Hmm. Everyone loved my mother. She was special. As much as I need her now, I know that God needed her more. He couldn't wait any longer for her to come home. I can't blame him. I'm sorry you didn't get your last dance. Oh, but Natalie, I did. And it was grander than any memory I've ever had before. You take care, okay? Mother, I love you with all my heart. I'm okay now. Whisper to me as God holds my hand. Whisper to me on the wings of angels. You belong here, Mama. Natalie, what is it? Everything's going to be okay. When the love you've known is gone, you bring such sorrow. So all alone It's an uphill climb The 
may take some time to love you feel Just me. 